So since we're on the topic of Hayden and basketball and Kevin Garnett, we might as well just dive right into some NBA. Oh, we're going to do a spelling bee for Kevin Garnett or? Oh my God. Oh my bad. He did tell me to get the fuck out of here. Respectfully. He did say he did fuck say out of here. Respectfully. So uh, that was never on my bingo card in the in my whole life was for Kevin Garnett to tell me to fuck out of here. Respectfully. How does that feel? Bro? That feels weird. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to <laughs> another episode of our, why are you laughing? It's because, yeah, you know. What was, I, what was I supposed to do? The countdown still? It, maybe. You wanted to do I wasn't the prepared. I wasn't prepared. You always do the countdown. Episode 88. Welcome back. Is that right? Yes, I looked it up. Okay, good. You destroyed my intro today, but we're going to keep it in. We keep things authentic here. Derek, I have a question for you. Hit me. Do you think we hate the 80s and 90s <laughs> when it comes to basketball? <laughs> Before you answer... I'm going to say I don't. I don't think Derek does either. But we have uh, began to get that reputation. Yeah, it's because we're realists. The players over time, this is my my example I'm going to give out. In any sport. This is Derek's opinion, by the way. Any sport, this is a fact. Okay. You go from the 1950s to the 1980s. Those 50s to 80s players are going to be a huge difference in skill and talent and how they play, right? They're going to be better in the 80s. Now, from the 80s to now, the majority of the players as a whole in each league, they're going to be better than the players in the 80s. Most of the time. I don't know any other sport to where it wasn't that. Yeah. Uh, Prove me wrong in any other sport. I don't know. Mixed martial arts, it could be like maybe the only one. But no, I I don't think that's a viable option either. Boxing, maybe because it stayed the same. There's no advances really in anything you could do in that. Yeah, I don't think Deontay Wilder could beat Muhammad Ali. But... (laughs) I mean, even with that, there's a lot more boxers now that are more skilled than the the group of boxers back then. Right. So that's my opinion on it. I think that's a fact. So, I think players and just humans in general get more athletic over time and we get better at certain things that we do. So I want to clear the air for a second. Do it. Um, I think we've been wrongfully accused. We've been called haters a lot. I am a hater of a few things. 80s and 90s basketball is not one. Nope. Michael Jordan, it's not one. No. Larry Bird, not one. Yeah, well, I was the one talking shit about Larry Bird. I actually love Larry Bird. I know, you love him. The Boston Celtics is one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a certified Boston Celtics hater. And for everybody in the comment section of one of our videos about me saying one of the most overrated moments of this season was Boston winning. Oh, they were upset. Telling me to cope, cry. Yeah. I am crying on the inside. You're damn right. Dante said, I didn't see any tears. I know. The guy said on the inside. And I was like, you got me. <laughs> you <laughs> got me. You got me. But we don't want everybody to think that we just hate the old and we're all about this new era of basketball and football and stuff. That's not us. It's not it. There's just a couple of things we've seen recently that we just felt that we needed to address. It's the stigmas that stay with the older generation and they believe it. No one's going to be better than that, that that player that they saw growing up. No one is better than their idol that they saw growing up. That's a fact. That and, is a fact. And that's most likely for me, it's going to happen with LeBron. I mean, that's going to be pretty damn hard for someone to challenge what LeBron did in his career. That is true. Um, but it's, it was yeah, a lot of people getting their feelings when they're their idol or their favorite player of all time. Yeah, and I want to discredited compared to the players now. I want to send a special shout out to a couple of uh people who commented. Um Kevin Garnett. Shout out to the big ticket. Shout out. Wasn't it the big ticket? Yeah. yeah. The big big ticket? ticket. Big ticket. Why did that not sound yeah, right? He's right. Shout out to the big ticket. He commented. Our boy No Chill Gil. Gilbert Arenas. He was the commented. first one to comment on that. Shout out to Gilbert Arenas. And uh lastly, my boy. Just Matt be careful. Wilson. Yeah. A member of the show. Yeah. Buddy, we miss you. Come back to us, baby. Matt hasn't been here in about eight episodes. He's we miss hating you. it. He's hating it. Yeah, he doesn't like what's been going on. Like, so they're just people. talking shit. I can't defend it. Yeah, he's been he's been voicing his opinion at the barbershop. They're he's reaching. not too happy. Reach. Hey. It's All facts. Right. So since we're on the topic of hating and basketball and Kevin Garnett. We might as well just dive right into some NBA. Oh, we're going to do a spelling bee for Kevin Garnett or? Oh, my God. Oh, my bad. He did tell me to get the fuck out of here. Respectfully. He did say he fuck did say out of here. Respectfully. So uh, that was never on my bingo card in, the, in my whole life 
was for Kevin Garnett to tell me the fuck out of here. How does that feel? Though? That feels weird. Like, doesn't that feel good? Because like, that's one of those dudes to where if you're watching someone trash talk highlights, you got Larry Bird, you got Kevin Garnett, you got Kevin Garnett's probably the main one because yep. he's ruthless with the shit that he says. What he said in that comment was the nicest thing he could have said. Can, okay, I wanted to organize this topic a lot better and I didn't I get time to research, but like, we don't even got to rank them. Let's just go, go over through because there's some ones I forget Kevin about. Garnett's most out of pocket moments. And my first one that I could think of at the top of my head, just close my eyes, boom, is when he told Carmelo Anthony, Lala okay. tastes like Honey Nut Cheerios. That is so disrespectful. You're swinging right there. You're, you got to throw your hands right there. That's got to be top five of all time. I mean, it's that's absolutely. Um, he goes pretty, pretty dark in some of them. Yeah. Oh, breaking news. Tim Duncan. What? Speaking of Tim Duncan. What? Chris Paul has signed a one-year $11 million deal with the San Antonio Spurs. What? Honestly, great. Wouldn't be about to go crazy that's with great. Chris Paul. Well, that's why they, they drafted, what's his name? Dillingham? Uh, Castle. Castle. No, Castle. 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 They did draft Dillingham, but then they traded him for Deuce Tatum's draft class. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So, yes. I mean, they... Their goal was to get a good guard. Yeah, they needed for, a point guard for Wemby. Yeah, they had Jeremy Sohan running point guard. Yeah, that was a, that's a no go. But I mean, Chris Paul's a definitely viable option. He's going to do point guard. He's going to do for them what he did for OKC. Yeah, point guard. Absolutely, he's about the veteran presence. Yep, yeah, and then yeah. they're going to make the playoffs. Absolutely, Maybe. not probably not. Yeah, nah. But we'll they'll see. be way better than what they were. So we got La La tasting like Honey Nut Cheerios. The uh, the Tim Duncan mom thing i'm not gonna say what it was but that one go look at it you look it up yourself we have to that is pretty bad he did he told tim duncan happy mother's day mother effer and tim duncan's mom i don't know if she had recently passed away or if it was like a long time ago but, but she's he, still not his mother yeah. is no longer with us and he said happy mother's day mother effer yeah. that was definitely one of the most out-of-pocket moments oh clutch um, sports did a top five most brutal that's Keep Charlie going. Villanueva was in there. I can't remember what he said. He told him he looked like an effing cancer patient, I think. Something like that. I hope yep. I'm not wrong because I'm just going to say That's like number asshole. one. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Charlie Charlie even put it on Twitter. He said, KG called me a, can- a cancer patient. I'm pissed because you know how many people died from cancer. And he's tossing it like it's a joke. And he didn't even have cancer. No, he just has alopecia. alopecia. <laughs> yeah. That's not funny. I'm not laughing at that. And Charlie tweeted that. At 2.34 a.m. Oh, that was on his mind. In 2010. <laughs> that was on his mind. He, was, he couldn't go to sleep. He could not sleep. And I wonder if that was game day. Do okay. Honey so Nut Cheerios was two this on is, here. What, okay, what about when my dude was in the stands? And he, uh, the dude threw Happy up a Mother's shot. Day three. And uh, I can't remember exactly how he started it, but he had said something like, I, <laughs> I can't even say it. I'm trying to think of, I, I forget which one you're talking about. Something happened, and he said, "Like fuck out of here, trash ass." Oh yeah, <laughs> go ahead and just that's that's one out. of his favorite sayings, though. Oh yeah, the, trash ass. <laughs> yeah, like um, I remember the joke. I forgot about the Joakim Noah one when Joakim Noah played against him. He's like, "Man, I'm like so happy like to play against you." Had you as a poster on my wall? Oh, he said, "Get off my dick, nigga." And he said, "Garnett said, f you, Noah." That's what he said. I thought that he said, "Get off." Did I just make that up that he said, "Get off my dick"? Probably. He's, I mean, in this it says, man, KG, I had you, I had your poster on my wall. I looked up to you, man. Noah excitedly said, KG responded with the words, fuck you, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, all right. And that's probably, that was the heel turn for Joe Kim Noah. Is he Kevin never Barnett back. the most disrespectful basketball player in NBA history? He made big baby cry. He did make Big Baby cry. <laughs> Stop crying, you big baby. That's he, what he said. He did make Big Baby cry. I remember that. He was on the bench ready to swing on KG. Uh, he's he's probably the most brutal for sure. And it's crazy because we never seen KG fight. I'm not saying you can't fight KG. I don't want no smoke with you. Please. I don't need you in the comment section telling me to fuck out of here disrespectfully. I just, I just, we never seen him fight for as much crazy stuff as he said to people. I he never it. got into a fight. Not that I've seen. And I mean, you go back, it looks pretty a little, uh, Little little elbow action. Little. He, he's not the one initiating it. He's getting he's getting pushed back by That's Zaza Pachulia. Oh my god, is that really? Yeah, that Number was twenty seven on the Hawks. Yeah. Damn, he's old. Yeah, that's Zaza. That is right Zaza, there. yeah. It's yeah. young Zaza. I remember him just for the Warriors. That's I how young I am. Um I mean, yeah, he, this is fighting. I don't and think he's not he, fighting. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, he's he's running away. Isn't this when uh 
Didn't he punch someone and run away, basically? No, nah, that was Mello. Mello, Mello punched did that? somebody and ran. Legitimately ran. He just pushed someone in the back. He tried. Okay, he squared up, though. He tried. Eh, I wouldn't say tried. He did the whole me back. He's, like ba- he's, he's the backpedaling said. master. Oh, he's fighting on the nets. KG, you're just oh, old. Oh, he's then. about 37 on the nets. <laughs> KG, you're just old then, brother. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he's definitely... I mean... Pat Bev's in there too. He's probably just a little past. He's like yeah, a Lance yeah, Stevenson. He's, a yeah, he's like a Lance yeah, Stevenson. Yeah, yeah. There's like past, past, and then there's dudes that like you just don't want to go They're just there talking with. Shit. Yeah, exactly. Like Draymond is one of them dudes that like you really don't want to go there with. Like, not we've seen Draymond smack people, kick people, do the whole nine. Um, yeah, Draymond. This was in 2013. Allen Iverson, Shaq. That's who he's been into, like, fights with? Rasheed Wallace, no, talking about trash talkers. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Oh, Rasheed like, Wallace. A, according to Bleacher Report in 2013. Rasheed Kobe Wallace Bryant, is definitely up there. Charles Barkley, KG is five. Chuck is up there. They have Gary Payton at four, Reggie Miller at three, Michael Jordan at two, and Larry Bird at one. Don't start. <laughs> Don't start. Don't start. Don't start. I, right. KG at five is crazy. Moving along. <laughs> Moving along. Okay. There is a massive breakup happening. Like, this is, like, moment of silence worthy. Oh, like, should I not make a joke? No, 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 no. We're going to make jokes. Okay. The Golden State Warriors have agreed to work out a sign and trade with Klay Thompson. They have mutually agreed to part ways. It is the end of an era. And before we comment on that. Splash Bros. The Bulls actually offered a trade to the Warriors. They offered Zach Levine for Chris Paul and Andrew Wiggins. The Warriors declined it and then proceeded to waive Chris Paul. <laughs> Andrew Wiggins is a good fit for them, though. I don't think he'd be there so. much longer. He was a good fit for him when they won that championship because he was that he was like the rim runner for him. He was a good defender, set the screens, <laughs> rim run. <laughs> it looked weird. You staring at me while you're chucking the diet Mountain Dew. It's the first time I've ever recorded where like I wasn't off yeah. camera. Yeah. And I'm so thirsty. Yeah, you're on camera now, and they're watching you. Zoom in. Ah. Anyways, do the do. I don't. I don't know what the Warriors do. I mean, you get Levine. What does that do for your team? Right. I mean, listen. You got a one-two punch with Curry and Levine. Kaminga's there. I mean, you, who else? Right. So <laughs> like, I mean. So the Warriors dynasty has it's over. I think it's safe to say it's over. It's I mean, been they over. did get that. They did get that chip though in, I think twenty two. Maybe. Yeah, I'm surprised they actually got it then. Yeah, they got that chip. So against think, the Celtics, I think it's safe to say that the Warriors' reign is officially over. Is that safe to say? No, oh, that's safe to say. I mean, Steph's not going to carry a team. Steph's probably what thirty four now. He's not carrying a team anymore. I mean. That team now is a bunch of old dudes mm-hmm. and unproven young players. Yeah. To where they might have showed a little bit of shine last year. But other than that, they're not carrying in a team. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're second best they players. They probably Andrew won't Wiggins make right the playoffs again. Not for a couple of years. No. I mean, when not when you got Clay going 0 for 10 in a closeout game. And he's probably one of the best shooters of all time. So do you still think Clay is a attractive free agent? If you're able to convince him um, that he's able to come off the bench and produce. I think he did start to come off the bench for the Warriors in a, uh, in the, towards the end of the season. That's why I said convince him. Yeah. He didn't want to come off the bench. Okay. You know what I mean? That's that's the team that you've been on. You've proven yourself. You've won championships. And your buddy, your duo, Steph, is still starting. You get benched. Yeah. You start coming off the bench. There's other players in front of you that, in your head, you're like, I am better than this dude. Yeah. And um, that's definitely an ego shot at Clay. I mean, so you just kind of have to convince him, say, hey, you're not who you are anymore. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. We're not, we don't want you to be locked down, Clay. You're not like that anymore. Yeah. I mean, coming off a of torn Achilles and torn ACL, that ruins it. You just have to know that, like, you are not that guy of yesteryear. This is not you. Yesteryear. Anymore. Yesteryear. He is not. So do you think a guy like Paul George would help them? I think Paul George would be. Very helpful. I mean, then who's your... I'm curious on who your starting five is if you get Paul George. Oh, they have to fill that roster. I think they need to... They I think Sark? they need to do a whole roster Daria shake Sark up. is on the team? I forgot about him. They need to do a whole roster shakeup. I mean, there's good free agents out there, though. If you you got Paul George out there, I firmly believe he's going to Philly. 
I think that's where he wants to go. I think that's one of his best odds of winning a championship. He signs there. They're getting a little stacked over there as long as Joel stays healthy. Yeah, and Cleveland got to make a move at that point. Yeah, rumors are going to have that Donovan's going to sign a super max. We'll see. That ruins your your playroom with the money and signing other players. Yep. So Paul George opted out. He chose a test free agency. I personally think he's going to Philly. I think there's other options. He'd be great on the Lakers, but he's going to have to p- take a pay cut. He unless LeBron wants to take a pay cut. That's the rumor of the day. LeBron has been rumored to say that he will take a pay cut uh, pay cut to get another star. Did he say that? How much of a pay cut? Vet men. Vet men is crazy. Bro. He LeBron's should. The cheapest, probably, he's probably the cheapest athlete in history. He ain't I think he's cheaper cut. than me. Yeah, he ain't taking a pay cut. He sh- If I'm him... I mean, and this is me. I'm a cheap bastard. I'm taking a vet men, bro. Vet men is crazy. He hasn't, that Nike deal that he has that has never been released probably got signed again for even more money as he got bigger. I mean, Bron can still get like 20 mil a year and they should be okay to sign people. I mean, we're talking, he's about to sign for 50 plus. He opted out of, I think, Good. 55. So 20 mil a year still 10. is nothing to sniff at. Get 10. 10. What? Listen, I know you're a billionaire and all. I don't know if I'm taking it that much of a pay cut. That's a lot of money. I'm taking it as a pay cut because what is that going to change for my lifestyle if I'm missing out on 30 mil? Okay. Dude's played 20 years. It's not like uh, he's didn't get paid. Yeah, he's probably got close to a billion dollars in uh, career earnings. In just career. Let's look up LeBron's career earnings. It's probably, okay, over, under, let's say. What he's played 20 years. $700 million. Over, under. You think Career that's earnings, 700 mil. Over, under. I'm going over. Over 700? I'm going over 700. I'm going to go under, but I think it's really close. Like I think it's probably in like the 620 range. Damn. Maybe he didn't make that much. How much is it? According to Business Insider, 479.5 mil. Oh, give me my 50 mil a year. Yeah, maybe. That feels like it's not right, though. You can't just look at that and make it not right. That feels like it's just not right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It just feels like he got paid way more than that before. I mean, I'm sure. But, I mean, I guess starting off, got four to five mil his first four years till 07. Yeah. Then 13 mil, 14 mil, 15, 14, 16, 17, 19, 20. Because the salary cap didn't yeah, really start kept to go getting, crazy yeah. until like 2012 area. Somewhere around there, I think. 2012 is when he was making 16. Um, wow, that little? The biggest jump was from 2015, he was making 23 mil with the Cavs, then 30 mil with the Cavs the next year, then 33, 35, 37, 39, 40, 44, 47. Damn. So increasingly got more and more. All right, so maybe my boy should ask for a little bit more money. Ask for more than the 50? No, I think the rumor was three year, 160, 165 million. He, nah, I'm Should that's for more? No, nah, not more than that. <laughs> no, no, okay. no, no, no. I mean, like, more than, like, vet okay. men. Okay. Yeah, he should ask for more than vet men. So we got Paul George out there. James Harden opted in. I don't know if that helps the Clippers at all. Um, I honestly think James Harden's a really good guard. Um, I think he's a good point guard. But he doesn't push you, push you over the hump for the Clippers. He's getting old now. You can't rely on him to carry you. I mean, there's stints when he was with the Sixers to where he put up 40 plus mm-hmm. in a playoff game to help yep. help the Sixers, but yep. he can't do that on a on a night to night basis anymore. So there was a good trade that happened that we got to talk about as well. There was a lot of picks thrown out for this guy. And I don't think I've ever seen a crazier trade for a guy who uh, is average. He's never been an All Star. He's a scorer. Yeah, he can put up points, but uh, the New York Knicks gave up four. Five total, four unprotected. Four first round picks and a player. And well, yeah, four first. Bogdan, right? Bojan? Yeah. First, I mean, four first rounders of theirs that is unprotected in a protected one of the Milwaukee Bucks. Damn. In an unprotected 2028 pick swap um, and a second round pick as well. Holy overpay. Yeah. Talk about win now, and it's uh, yeah, but he ain't a win yeah. now addition. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He's a good player. Like no disrespect to Mikael Bridges, I like Mikael Bridges. He plays good defense. He's a three and D guy. He can get to the hoop. He can give you, you know, twenty a game. Now here's the thing: 
the Nets tank, they get the first pick. They're getting Cooper Flag. Ooh. And him, you just might say that's just a win off of that one pick. Just off of the and one then, pick. And then that trade. Yeah, and then you got the years that come after that. Yeah. So now that uh, the New York Knicks have assembled the Villanova squad, um, I don't know if you remember, but Stephen A., back in, uh, I want to say 2017, he said that Villanova didn't have any NBA players on that team. Four? And now they have four. Not on just any team, though. Just on? His favorite team at that, his New York Knicks. Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, White Dante, and Mikael Bridges. White all playing Dante. for the Knicks. People tell me Dante's a black name all the time, but I don't think it is. I'm not going to lie. I used to have a, uh, a co-worker. His name was Dante. He was Italian. It's an Italian name. It I is. thought he was black. <laughs> did you see the table setting at the wedding I was at last night? I did not. You didn't see it? No. Go to my Snapchat story real quick. Okay. I want you to see something real quick. I want you to tell me about it while I'm looking it up. No, no I just, I just, you just need to see it. Okay. But um, while you're looking for that, oh, it went away. No, it was uh, at the table and it said Dante Dawson. They spelled it horribly wrong, but technically correct because I spell my name. A wee bit ghetto. I mean, kind of. They spelled it D O N T E. They spelled it D A N T E. Dante. 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 You Dante. But um, yeah. Does this Miguel Mikael Bridges pick? Does it? What does it do for the Knicks in the Eastern Conference? It helps with scoring if Julius Randle gets hurt. I think they. I think they move on from Julius Randle. Because I mean, when Brunson was in the playoffs, it was just him scoring. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dante DiVincenzo put up some points. Yeah. He had a couple 20-point games. But, yeah, you weren't relying on him, though. Like, those were surprising games. Right. Like, you're not expecting him to be the, that one-two punch with Jalen. It was mainly focus on Jalen, get the ball out of his hands, let the other players beat you. Yeah. A.K.A. Josh Hart, yeah. Dante, uh, the other short point guard. He's McBride. nasty. McBride, yeah. He, he had a good game in the playoffs, mm-hmm. too. But McHale's like a... He's a solid, and he made a an all defensive team too. Yeah, he's a great defender. So it's not like he's just an offensive player. He's going to give you some good defense too. The Knicks need to do a little bit more with that roster though, because I I didn't like the uh, pairing of Jalen Brunson and um, Julius Randle because I think they're the same player. Literally, I think they're the same exact player. One is just six eight, and one is six one or whatever Jalen Brunson is. Yeah. So. We'll see what they do, but I think four first round picks for Mikael Bridges is egregious. So is Mikael Bridges his stat or his game streak still live? <laughs> it won't be after this season. <laughs> but yes, it is. I think it's four hundred and seventy two. I took a picture of it. Hold on. So the only reason why I'm asking four hundred and seventy four straight games. He's played four hundred and seventy four straight games to begin his career. Because that's what I'm really confused about. Because in 2020, 2021, he only played 72 games. That's 10 games. I don't know. Was that Did COVID change that? Was that 2020? It might have been. Because remember, they shut down the NBA. So that's what I'm trying to think. Maybe, maybe that didn't. Maybe they didn't get a full 82, but I just looked at it and it looked a little weird. Yeah. Only 72 games. Well, if um, you guys know Thibs, they might. Yeah. if you know Tom Thibodeau, he loves to run his players into the ground. Therefore, if I was a betting man, which I am, I'd put money on this streak ending this season. And, I mean, Tyrese Halliburton talked a little bit about it on the uh, Pat McAfee show when he was on it. He's like... Every time they do a poll in the NBA based on players and everyone else, who's the least coach you would want to play for? Dibs. He's number one on the list yeah. that you do not want to play for. When in the when they did that, uh, the the most overrated and the best defender, you remember the video and I did the green screen of it? Mm-hmm. I said Dibs was the person I wouldn't want to play for most myself. <laughs> Neither would I. I like my knees. I'm like, bro, give me a break. Yeah, I got a bruise growing right now. <laughs> I, this will run me into the ground. It's like, dude, we're at practice. I ain't going. You want me to... Do fucking gassers right He just now? shrinks his rotation. Like, that's just, it yeah. it, it goes to like yeah. a six-man rotation towards the end of the season. It's like we start off at 10, then it goes down to 9, then 8, and 7. It's like, And then before damn. you know it, it's like, Jalen Brunson, yeah. you're not coming out. Right. <laughs> oh, you're tired? It's like, you're not coming out. Sorry. So do we do we want to talk about the NBA draft at all? Um, We can 
highlight a couple of the uh, surprising picks or some of the players on there if we want to. Oh, okay, so do what, do you, what was your most surprising pick if you had to pick one? Zach Eady at nine. Drip Eady looking like an album cover when he was hanging out waiting to get drafted. Let's go. Because a lot of people had cleaning over him. Did he, he, did, he, did he go before clinging? Or am I tripping? No, no Clinton went, went seven. Him. He went seven. Um, yeah, never mind. Clinton went seven. I thought he went after that. Um, but yeah, at nine for the Grizzlies. That that seems like a weird location. Like with uh, it's just like Jaron Jackson. It's like Jaw and Desmond Bain and him. And it's like I don't know. I, it's he, his style just doesn't fit in the NBA very well. But it, I, it, it it hurts a little bit. Remember what I told you though. Walker Kessler plays like him though too. So. I think I think he is Zubak from the Clippers. Bigger. Zubak is a very productive player. He's like a ten and ten guy. Slow. Don't really switch screens very well. Can't shoot. Uh, maybe he can, but I haven't seen him shoot often. Outside of fifteen foot, ten footer. No, not really. Like I don't I haven't seen anything outside yeah. of there. But for all the people, when we talked about Zach Eady, remember I told y'all. I tried to tell y'all. I said, Zach Eady will be in the NBA. He will be playing. He got taken ninth overall. I tried to tell y'all. I tried to tell y'all. Cat was in the comment section like, Eady will be in China. He'll be in Europe. Even Matt said something. Drip Eady got taken ninth overall. Congrats to him, man. That's my boy. I like Zach Eady. It's an album cover for him. Oh, it sure was fire. I'm ready to hear his, uh, his new debut on his album. You ever heard of Zach Eady talk? I assume I know what it sounds like. Low key black. Keep real with you. Deep ass voice. Real deep. That's what I figured. Real deep. Ving Rhames deep. Like he he can't say words without like slurring them a little bit. We're not gonna touch that topic. Um, it's a lot. Of, that's how a lot of big people talk. Okay, I thought you were gonna say that's how black people no, talk. No, that's not what I was I going. It's not a lot of people. It's not a lot of big. <laughs> he said, I was like, oh, he's gonna go no, for it. No. <laughs> but you know, like the bigger dudes, yeah, yeah how I they talk, they just have a deeper, and they just. The words don't come out as clear. You know who my most surprising pick was? Who? A guy that I mean, wasn't picked, actually. Who? DJ Burns. Falling yeah. out of the draft was crazy to me. Um, Because he showed a lot of hope and a lot of talent in March Madness. And lost weight. He lost a lot of weight. I I'm confused to why he didn't get picked. He showed that he can shoot, you know, from 15. He can finish. Big body. He's a good passer. You know, a little undersized for the position. He's young too, though. Yeah, but, a lot of prom, a lot of promise. Right. Like I mean, he he's older, but still young. Because I think he's How like, old is he? I think he's like twenty three. Okay, never mind. I he thought was he was somewhere before that. Texas Tech. Okay. Yeah, I think he's like twenty three. If I'm not twenty three, you're right. There My you bad. Go. I thought he was younger than that. But I was surprised that he didn't get taken. Man, I thought DJ Burns had made a name for himself in March Madness, and he got picked up. I mean, you look at a dude like Jack Golkey. Who also got picked up. Yeah. Oklahoma City Thunder. Yeah. I mean, good fit. You're going to... Hey, we'll listen, see. Listen, I got clowned for saying that he was not going to be able to make it to the NBA. What just happened? Although he didn't make a final roster spot or anything like that, he's on a roster right now. He goes in a summer league and he has a couple games of like five plus threes. He will be on a roster. And this is exactly the person I referred him to is the Sam Merrill. The yeah. Sam Morrell. Yeah. What does he do for the Cavs? Just shoot threes. Does he play defense? Nope. He gives effort. Yep. He's is there. he great defensive? He's a body. No. But he's the guy that's coming off rolls, coming off screens, whatever, catch and shoot threes. Yep. That's all he's got. Yeah. And I said ex exactly, Jack can do exactly that as long as he's hot. Yeah, I mean, did J.J. Reddick play defense? I'm not saying he's J.J. Reddick, but I'm yeah. just saying there's dudes who are just shooters yeah. who just shoot. And Jack can do that. And he doesn't shoot twos. He no. shoots some. No. There was a couple in his whole career. Something attempts yeah. and only like, like maybe three of them yeah. were inside the arc. <laughs> but hey, give him a three-point specialist hey, badge and that's, that's it. If I'm on OKC though, and I'm one of their coaches, I'm like, keep practicing your threes. Yep. I don't That's I, all we need you for. We don't need you for the twos, whatever. I that's mean, it. You're strictly outside the outside the perimeter. Uh you got anybody else you were surprised about? Uh Dalton Kinnett falling um to the Lakers that that deep. I mean, I know he's older, so a lot of people are like, don't want to give that big of a first round pick on him. But there's no, there's not that many players in this draft. The, so <laughs> that are it was that I guess, standout ish. I guess it was a situation of he's 23. What you've seen from him this past season 
that is the best you're going to get from him. But maybe. But hey, let's just say he never gets better. Shit, I liked what I seen. <laughs> I liked what I seen. Yeah. He played good. He was a third, he was a, a a good three-point shooter, three-level score. He can get to the hoop, he'll dunk on you. He's got a big body. Big he can body. knock down shots. He's clutch. I like Don Connect. I thought him falling to the Lakers. I was like, oh man. I thought Philly was gonna take him, honestly. Who's that big man from Kentucky? The post player? Yeah. What's his name? From the, like this season? Yeah. Am I tripping? Or is it Duke? Uh Filipowski. Filipowski. Duke. Yeah, Duke. My bad. Different blue. Um, you see his girlfriend? The, the, the groom. I have my head off the mic. The groomer? Yeah. The groomer? <laughs> That's insane. The Mormon? That's insane. Is it even more insane that Utah was like, we ain't scared of Mormons. Bring him on Perfect in. Perfect landing Bring spot. Bring him on in. <laughs> Perfect landing yeah, spot. That story was crazy. Yeah. So that, not a surprising pick, but a surprising story that exactly happened during the draft. Yeah. Like perfect time. There you go. Yep. Like the chick that said something about JJ Reddick. Did you hear that story? Mm-mm. When he was coming into the draft? Nah, it was when he uh, got the Lakers head coach. Nah, draft. what'd she say? I can't remember the exact story. I'm paraphrasing. This is not going to be exact quote, but she said she was working with the Duke uh, men's basketball team. And she said, you know, it's crazy to think that uh, I got called the N word once by a guy that is now the Los Angeles Lakers head coach. I think she's lying. Listen, bro. Ah. Some people aren't going to like this. JJ's allowed? No, nah, some people aren't going to like what I'm going to say next. All right. I like what the Lakers are doing. I'm originally a Cavs fan, still a Cavs fan, but I'm here for the Lakers. You know, I'm here for a good time, not a long time, even though I'm considering staying. You know, they drafted my boy Bronny, class act. But that's my head coach. I'm going to take up for my head coach. She probably deserved it. Dang. <laughs> I mean, he didn't say it, man. He know. didn't say that. There's definitely white dudes in the NBA that say it. Hundred percent. Jason Williams said it in a podcast with Udonis Haslam. Did I don't remember that, that. No. What? White chocolate? Yes, white chocolate. Jason Williams. He was talking to Udonis Haslam and said the N word. I, I rubbed my eyes and said, "Wait a minute." Haslam didn't react to it. Nothing. They just laughed at the story. He's like one of the dudes I would think re- like would react to it. Yeah, and I guess he's one of the dudes that people would be like, "Yeah, he cool. He can say it." That's crazy, right? I mean, where did J. J. Will grow up? In in the hood? He sounds low-key hood, so probably somewhere in the hood. So it was just natural. You know, look him up. My dude's going to be from, like, Kansas. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Was there another? Oh, for me, I wanted to say uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves absolutely won the draft. West West Virginia. Ah, okay. Not what I was expecting. That's that, where he was born. I don't know if that's where he grew that up. That N-word hits a little different now. No, he did, he did. He did grow up in West Virginia. Well, that N-word hits a little different now. <laughs> I had to find a video and send it to you. Well, maybe because he was hanging out with Randy Moss so much. Oh, God. During high school. Like, Randy gave him the pass. But um, I think the Timberwolves won the draft, bro. You got to think. They traded for Rob Dillingham. Good pick. Yep, Rob Dillingham was eighth overall, and somehow they traded like a 2031 first round pick for him. And then uh, they drafted Taron Shannon Jr. out of Illinois. If anybody remembers how much work he put in the tournament, dog, that is going to be some demons on that team at guard. You got to deal with him, Taron Shannon Jr., Anthony Edwards, and Rob Dillingham. That's going to be a long night, bro. That's going to be a long night. Long Johnson night. Oh, boy. That's going to be a long night for them, though. I think the Timberwolves absolutely won the draft, though. Um, yeah, I mean, talking about that, the, Mike Conley was starting point mm-hmm. guard. I don't think... Dillingham might start right off the bat. I think he's best served as a six-man. I like that Lou Will The role scoring helps, him. Yeah, yes. just Anthony Edwards can go out. You got to do this. going to come in and give you instant offense. Yes. But he I've, could start. I've never been a big fan of putting all your offensive scores out on the floor. No, you need somebody to come off the bench and give you when offense. Yeah, because when it comes to your bench, you're just going to have dudes. That's what uh, like Nate Robinson was for a lot of teams. Dude, just come in and just instant offense. Yeah. Just give you buckets real quick. Brandon Jennings, Lou Will, and, you know, Jamal Crawford. Jamal, yeah. yeah, just dudes that would just come in and just give you buckets. Kyle Corver for a little bit, JR. Yeah. I yeah. mean, a little, not that prolific with no, it, still but the same still role, there. Though. Still that same role. Um. Your dude Antonio Reeves got got traded to the Pelicans after drafted by the Magic. Um, there was this I forget who this player is. Antonio Reeves was really nice though. I'm surprised he didn't. What pick was he? 
He was picked 47. That's crazy to think Reed Shepard went third. And Antonio Reeves was the best player for Kentucky all season long. Was it Jamal Sheed? Shed. Shed. He's the guy from Houston walking out of the walking into the tunnel. Everyone was throwing the trash and he's the one that picked it up. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that guy. Good pick. Yeah. I didn't yeah, I've never watched him play, to be honest. He can play. Great pick. Good guard. Yeah, he can play. Um and then yeah, he got drafted by the Kings and then I guess reportedly traded to the Raptors. Oh, thank God for him. Um, I mean, the Kings are good now, but yeah, like the Kings before, the Kings was like the place that you would go to to die. Isn't there? Didn't the Kings draft the one guy during college uh, a couple years ago to where he had like some some sort of heart problem to where he collapsed on the floor? For who the Kings? No, it was in college. It happened. Collapsed on the floor. Bam! Came back. He left that college, went to some smaller college, played there. And then went to the NBA draft, got picked up by someone. Oh, um, Keontae think, Johnson. Yeah, I think that's from who it Florida, is. and then he ended up going to like Kansas State. Yeah, yep. not Kansas that guy. State. What was think, the other purple team? Was it Kansas State? Yeah, I think it was Kansas State because they were in the tournament. Keontae Johnson. Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, him. Yeah, yep. he was a bucket in college. Yep, he's twenty four. Yeah, currently on OKC. Thunder. Yep. Yep. G Leaguer though. Played nine games. Dang. G Leaguer. Yeah. yeah. But hey, I mean, that's a it's a crazy story for him, too. Absolutely. I mean, we can get off the topic of NBA. Yeah, we, we can did. move off NBA. We did. Did probably yap a little a little long on the it's NBA right. draft. Kind we'll we'll talk about Bron- Bronny eventually. You yeah, guys, we we you guys are seeing it everywhere else anyways. Yeah, we beat that <laughs> you're not gonna You're not going to hear anything different from us. So do you want to go UFC or NFL? Um... I'm cool. We can recap UFC real quick. I won't dive. I really only wanted to too just deep talk into main it. Event, to be honest, actually, two fights. That's it for me. Hit me with it. I just wanted to talk about uh, Ian Machado Gary versus Michael Venom Page, and then obviously the main event. So, um, I don't want to put you on blast. Did you watch those fights? I did. I watched both. Okay. Of them. Yes. Um, I was expecting more from Ian Gary during that fight. I think he was scared. I think, I think he was scared. I think he looks back on that fight. And shakes his head and says, I need to improve. I think he was scared. I think that was his biggest test so far. And I think he saw a moment where Michael Venom Page is a good striker. He, on the feet, Page was a better striker. And he I couldn't think, stand with him. And I think he realized he couldn't stand with him. And he was like, if I want to get out of this fight, like with my hand raised, I have to get this dude to the ground. Which, that is the part of mixed martial arts. That's complete, how you win. Yep. yep. Being a complete fighter. You're able to... Pick apart and choose how to win. Yeah, because if he was still on his feet, Ian yeah. Gary would have If lost. he wasn't, yeah, if Ian Gary wasn't a wrestler or a grappler and couldn't take anyone down, he loses that fight. Hundred percent. Being a well-rounded fighter, it helps. Because he he looked he looked a little shook. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I, I, I yeah, I was gonna say for Michael Page is you go back look at that. You're like, I need to work on my ground game, but I'm not beating myself up over a dude that is 15 and 0. And I just, this is my second fight in the UFC now? Yeah, second fight in the UFC. What does suck? You're he's 37. Like, what, 30, oh. <laughs> he's 37. I thought he was like 34. No, he's Damn. 37. Uh, Ian Gary's 26. So 11, yeah. 11 year difference. Damn. And this is what the most surprising thing is on the feet, Paige is faster. Mm-hmm. He's put more effort forward. Yep. And he looked quicker. Looked like a, He looked like a better striker. Looks like and he's eleven I'm, years older. Yeah, you would think he'd run out of gas nah, and not be was, able to stay with it. Oh man, was throwing them. Hands. He was there. He was throwing them hands. So, the main event, the kick heard around the world. <laughs> Almost kicked my dude's man bun off. Poor guy. I just I wanted to ask, like, do you look at Izzy different now as a fighter, seeing that he beat Alex Perea? Because uh, look at the a way he's bit. won his last two fights. Yeah. Stone Cold knockouts. Yeah. I would say for, for Izzy, for sure, um, what does hurt his case a little bit, if he just lost a pair, that's cool. His case doesn't get hurt as much. Him losing to Sean Strickland. That was bad. And then Sean Strickland not being able to defend his belt against Du Duplessis, however you say his name. Um, that hurts Adesanya's case. Um, because... He did fight Sean Strickland pretty bad, similar oh, to how he felt 
or fought Yoel Romero. I don't know if anyone remember watching that. Go I back watch, watch that. that it was not a lot of strikes were thrown. I think it, you look at ranking, that's probably ranked in the top 10 worst title fights of all time. Yeah, Izzy looked scared in that fight versus Sean Strickland. Like, I think Sean Strickland landed like a punch early. Like, some, he landed he some locked. significant blow early. And Izzy never came back from it. Like, he was just strictly on defense mode that entire fight. So that was just a bad fight from him. Like, I agree with that. But So, I mean, Izzy now has a chance to get his title back against Du Duplessis. I can't say his name, but you know who I'm talking about. They got crazy names. Um, So he could win that back. He wins that back. Now who does he fight? Does he go for that trilogy with Piera? Does he fight Sean Strickland a second time because Strickland already beat him for a title? It's you have because, to go for the top. But then Alex wants to be a three time champ. Some people are talking about him balking up and fighting John Jones. Yeah, because it's like, who does he fight next? If you're Pereira, who he does he went through. Next? He went through the whole division and dominated everybody. And I'm not going to lie. I'm one of those dudes that in the very beginning, I'm like, he's not beating Izzy. There's no chance. And then he won. He's not He's not doing it again. He's not winning all these fights. And he's Bro, he proven me wrong. he's people's blocks off. He's proven me wrong. I'm, I started to like him. I hated him at first. Now I like him. Oh, I like him. I like him. See, I haven't watched a crazy amount of him to hate him. Like, I hate I hated, I hated the way carry. I hated the way that he walked, the way that he talked. <laughs> hey, did you see me comment that, talking yeah. about Boston? I was like, I hate the way that they dress. But, I mean, ever since he lost to Izzy the first time, he beat Jan, he beat Yuri, he beat Jamal Hill, he beat Yuri again, and it's like... Oh, he beat Yuri twice. I didn't know he beat Yuri twice. Yeah, he beat Yuri twice. He, oh, he almost kicked his head off his shoulders, bro. Yeah, I'm... I, some people I saw were betting Yuri, and I'm like, I don't know. I didn't think it was going to be, like, much of a fight, though, to be honest. I, I first said TKO in the second round. And then I'm like, you know what? I want a good fight. TKO fourth round. And then he knocked him out in the knocked second round. Knocked him out in the second I'm round. I'm like, damn it. Should have kept that. I mean, to the point where, like, they stopped it pretty quick. You saw it. You oh, he's hit out. the ground. God. And you seen him, come, like, come into a little bit. He flips over, and it, it was over just that You quick. see him stand up afterwards? No, I didn't. He he stood up, and then he started to. Dude. He started to fall over. He Herb Dean had to, like, hold him. His coach, someone had to hold him up. Those are the best knockouts when you, the dude get up and he don't have his legs yet. He got, like, he's two still, legs. Bro, he was still, he's still wobbly. He couldn't, he couldn't, he wasn't all there. Did you see the girl get her forehead split? Yeah. We Did watched watch that, that fight. fight. Macy, I. Did I, you hear the announcers when it happened? That they weren't happy about them calling? Yeah. It? Yeah. Daniel Cormier Jordan was like, wasn't happy about them calling. Yeah, it. and then you saw her fucking brain yeah. through her forehead. <laughs> Listen, here's the thing. With did you hear the um the the doctor when he came in? No. Uh-huh. And what he said about the cut? No, what he said. So he's the one that's usually supposed to make the call, him and the ref decide. And um they're mic'd up. You can hear him. He's talking about it. it's it's deep. He's the doctor's saying this, and he's like but you, you decide to the ref and the ref's like, doesn't know what to say. He's just like, kind of like staring at it. And the doctor's like, it's deep. Like it's, it's pretty deep. And you're and then, still not calling and it. And then, the, and then the ref's like, all right, it's, it's off. It's off. It's off. But, um, Jordan said he wished they didn't call that. I said, dude, one more elbow, one more strike. That thing you're losing here. To your eyebrow, gone. I was watching on my phone, and I was like, holy gone. shit. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, the refs and the doctors are there to protect fighters. Yeah. She wins that fight. Her head gets fucked up even worse. She's out for a year. Yeah. The, you the want to be out even longer? The like, craziest part was Joe Rogan was like, oh, man, that cut's bad. She's bleeding bad. Oh, they're not going to stop this thing, are they? Oh, come on. You can't do that. And I'm like, how are you going to talk about how bad she's cut? I got no bleeding yeah. is a part of the sport. But that's a pretty bad one. I know that the Nick or the Nate, Nate Diaz. Um, well, there's another dude that got split. Um, versus Masvidal being cut open. That ended. That was his whole face. Was uh, was that the one with his Diaz. whole face was split? Yeah. Um, right underneath his like eyebrow yeah, yeah, and yeah. his like eye. Like there was somebody else that got split real bad in his forehead. Like yeah, like, like that. That's just the worst Ooh. spot to get it because one more elbow, one more punch, that could rip yeah. it off. Yeah. 
And then what are you doing there? Yeah. <laughs> Did <laughs> like, you see the dude that got split this weekend too? The knee? Yeah. The knee? Yeah, that was bad. That was that was worse than the, the woman's fight. Yeah, I think that was worse. Um, luckily, he didn't have to keep fighting. He got KO'd. But uh, yeah, you can... I remember seeing the picture of the the needle numbing Ooh. numbing his head and uh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, right, we make my stomach hurt. it's we pretty make my bad stomach hurt. but yeah that was it was good ufc card yeah it was great a good fights card. Yeah, i wish it was uh you know a couple more people that i knew because i'm kind of a casual ufc fan the other like i said there wasn't a lot of a lot of fighters i knew either. i knew yuri perea i knew uh Suppo- and- it was supposed to be a way better card than that yeah it got ruined but you know we'll stay tuned for the next one yeah um do you want to do a little NFL before we get out of here? I'm cool to do a little bit of NFL. So I saw this going around and um, I want to do like a series. I didn't get a chance to tell you yet, but um, I want to do like a series. So for the people who watch this, if you want us to do our opinion of your team's Mount Rushmore, let us know and we'll do it. And then you can agree with us, disagree with us. But I want to do a Mount Rushmore of the NFL right now. And then we can move on to NBA and then do like the Lakers Mount Rushmore, Duke Blue Devils Mount Rushmore, North Carolina's Mount Rushmore, you know. So I have my four. I don't, I don't have I my, know. I just, I was going to say, I, I didn't, no I didn't, no research or nothing. But so there is four people I struggle with. Okay. I'm, I'm going to debate yours too, as you tell me. So there were two people that I undoubtedly was putting on this list no matter what. That is Tom Brady and that is Jerry Rice. Those two are on Mount Rushmore for me, no matter what They have you unbreakable say. records. They are, Tom Brady is the undisputed GOAT. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what you think of the guy, cheater, pretty boy, whatever, cry to your mom. Jerry Rice, I mean, I mean, my dude was putting up- No mass- receiver is gonna be able to do yeah, that. Yeah, my dude was putting up massive numbers at 40. Like, I'm done. Two people I struggle with though. So I have my list here as Barry Sanders. Okay. Even though I really, really, really want to put sweetness on there. Walter. I, Walter. I really want to put Walter Payton he on there. He has an award I, named after him. I think I want to go Being Barry. Being a great though. guy. And then I literally have it hyphenated. Barry Slash. and Walter. Okay. And then my last spot. So I'm going to go Barry for the sake of the argument. Okay. I'm going to go Tom Brady, Barry Sanders, Jerry Rice. And then for my last spot, I had two people. God damn it, I keep running into my mic. BBT. What's BBT? Big Brady, Barry, and... Oh, I thought you were about to give me something crazy I never heard of. <laughs> no. For my fourth spot, I'm really between Lawrence Taylor and Reggie White. Now, I gave Lawrence Taylor the slight edge. I would have too. Because he has an MVP. Yeah, as a defensive player. But... G. White was like that. Oh, Reggie Both White were like that. that. I'm going to go Lawrence Taylor strictly because he was off of cocaine and was still putting in massive amounts of work on the field. Only if Josh Gordon could do that. <laughs> so my Mount Rushmore for the NFL is Tom Brady, Barry Sanders, Jerry Rice, ah, and Lawrence Taylor. I really wanted to say Reggie White. It's not bad. Um, I've been doing a little bit of research looking. I mean, a lot of people have at least three for the most part out of yours. Mm-hmm. Brady, Rice, and I think those two are just, I, yeah, I feel like you can't dispute Brady and Rice. Taylor, I feel like you can, you can find ways to dispute him. You can go four offensive players if you wanted to. Someone put Jim Brown on there. Jim Brown. I can see it. Um, these are coaches. Johnny Unitas. Nah. 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 You're right. Joe Montana. Joe Montana was a fucking quarterback, you idiot. <laughs> I see. I didn't I remember when you said In it a couple right of, yeah, and I was like, mm. um I I don't disagree with yours to be honest. Um if you're choosing like an, a different position every time, I I think it should be Brady Rice. Running back's a tough one. Running back is a tough one. You can bounce around to a lot of like those three of Jim Brown, Walter Payton, and Barry Sanders. Yeah, right there. I mean, because some people will like throw Emmett in there. You know what I mean? Because Emmett has like the Emmett. most rushing yards of all time. Yeah, I like Emmett being there too. Um, 
but I think he might be last on the list. People might not like that. Cowboys I mean, fans might not like that one. But true. I mean, when most people talk running backs, you got Barry up there, and then you got Walter Payton up there a lot of times. Yep. Jim Brown, not so much, just because he played in a way, yeah, in, a, in an era to where running back heavy and not a lot of people watched it. Right. Um. So I really, I don't have a top four. I want to agree with yours. Um, I mean, we can put it as barbershop break rooms, Mount Rushmore. We'll do that. Barbershop break rooms, Mount Rushmore. Because I don't think you, I don't know where to disagree with you at. The running back one, I I, I could go either way with uh, with Peyton or, you know, Barry, doesn't matter. I mean, I'm looking at Emmett's. Terry Bradshaw. I'm looking at Emmett's. Uh, Terry Bradshaw. Don't start. I'm looking at Emmett's Total? numbers and stuff. and Bradshaw. I mean. Bradshaw. Emmett. Ah, man. What about Deacon Jones? I mean, li- listen to this. Listen to this by Emmett real quick. Just yards. It's 15, ridiculous. 1,500, 1,700, 1,400, 1,400, 1,700, 1,200, 1,000, 1,300, 1,300, 1,200, 1,000. I mean, but he only a had, out of his 15-year career, he only had four years under 1,000 yards. Now, For a 15-year career, that's insane. That is insane. For 15 years. That's a long career for a running back, bro. Here's my little asterisk with it. Their offensive line stacked. was stacked. All Hall of Famers. Barry Sanders on the Lions. They weren't a very Not good stacked. team. They Not weren't stacked. a very good team at all. And that's why I wanted to go Barry. Because, and he retired. At his peak. Yes. You don't really see too many people who retire at their peak. Because every the Detroit Lion that did it, Calvin Johnson. <laughs> he could have broke, when he was in the league, he could have broke the record. Yep. And he was still like, I want to retire. Yep. And move to outside of America and go to the UK. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I he did He did say it in a documentary. I forget why, but he just wanted to get away from everything. He said, fuck this shit. I'm out. I just want to get out of here. Mic drop. Is there anything that you uh, wanted to add before we get out of here? Um, I really don't think anything on my end. There's not much going on in the sports world right now. Um, the sports world is a little dry right now. A lot of Caitlin Clark, a lot of Bronny, a lot of the same stuff. Caitlin Clark beat her her idol. She did beat Deion, uh, by Diana Taurasi. Um, I stroked out trying to say that. I know the, the MLB did change roles for, I think, the Home Run Derby. It might have been the Home Run Derby. MLB announced new rules and format to the Home Run Derby. Do so they changed the that. No, I don't care. Okay. I watch it every year, but I don't really like care for it. It's just like, ah, it's on TV. Let's do it. Yeah. My son competed in a Home Run Derby this year. He got one home run. Did he? Well, they're equivalent to a home run. Okay. I you mean, know what it was? That's good. What was it? Outside of third base? It just getting past to the outfield. Base? Oh, it was like flags. Could it just roll? No, no, had to be up in the okay, air. Okay, okay. He got one. So past third base. Yeah. Or no, second base yeah. is what I meant. He got one. I was disappointed. You're like, you son of a bitch. Yeah, I was like, one. One. Um, I just want to say, Langston Galloway, shout out to you for making the Random. 2024 USA men's select team. Random. I don't know how he made it. My dude was playing in Europe last year. Yeah. I, there's some people on here that I have no clue who they are. Um, actually, I think I know everyone besides Micah Potter. Yeah, I don't know him either. You got Jalen Dern, Cooper Flag, Nigel Hayes. Nigel Hayes, playing in Europe too. He, he was on the Pacers. Real Madrid, I want to say. He was he on the Wisconsin. Pacers too. He's from Ohio, actually. Um, Trace Jackson Davis from yeah. the Warriors. Indiana. Or Indiana? College. Okay. Sorry. I was like, huh? Not Pacers. The other Warriors guy that has the curly hair. I can't Old say his last name. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't say his, I couldn't say his last name. Hell. Keegan Murray, Trey Murphy, Brandon Miller, Hami Haquez, even though it's spelled Jamie. Hami. Um, Peyton Pritchard, Jabari Smith. Okay. Shout out to the Rockets. Jalen Suggs and Amon Thompson. Not his brother, just him. <laughs> just him. <laughs> All right. But yeah, that's all that's all I got for you. Nothing nothing special for my end. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in to another episode of Barbershop Break Room. Remember, guys, we do not hate the 80s and the 90s. Okay? We respect the old school. Jim Brown, Joe Thomas, Josh Gordon. Not old school enough. Ozzy Newsom. That's our Mount Rushmore. <laughs> 
<laughs> Peace out, everybody. <laughs>